Um, up next is the team from the United States, Sense and C. So hi, uh, my name is Jack Twitty, and I am part of the Sense and C team, and I'm going to talk a bit about the translational medicine aspect of our device. So as we all know, cardiovascular illness is a humongous problem throughout the developing world and also within the United States in particular. Um, one trend that we've noticed in our country is that um, cardiovascular care is significantly worse for patient populations that are un traditionally underserved. Um, as a result, being able to provide quick and uh, inexpensive uh, diagnostic testing will certainly help to, pr uh, to produce better outcomes throughout patients um, in those areas and also improve our response to cardiovascular disease overall. So in a typical um, treatment protocol, something like a test for ProBNP would be performed only much later in a cardio panel, um, more or less after electrophysiological readings have been done to establish that there is in fact a relevant problem in the first place. Um, if we were able to provide something that's cheap and fast and available at the point of care, we're able to sort of bypass that and allow for effective diagnostic screening much earlier in the process, which allows for more effective patient treatment. Um, that's exactly what our device aims to provide. Um, effectively, we're providing a multiplexed sensing method um, that takes a very small blood sample and very quickly and cheaply processes that um, for data related to the amount of BNP in the blood and thus um, cardiovascular health of the patient. Um, so. One of the things that we're trying to do, both within a specific device sample and also within um, our sort of broader idea, is to increase the amount of data available to care providers to be able to more effectively treat their patients. Again, we're trying to make our device cheap, um, make it effective and quick, and easily to proliferate amongst the medical community. Um, but we're also running multiple samples on the same disk, so our centrifugal device allows four different samples as of right now to be run simultaneously. Um, in doing so, we're able to get a much more accurate picture of our uh, patient's current state of health. And also, oh, sorry, one of the other things that our device does is handles a, uh, a data processing algorithm that takes that information and for the uh, care provider actually does all the relevant processing. Our, di our uh, disk is actually already set up to handle um, things like sample loading and uh, preparation of the other uh, chemicals involved in the test. Um, all that the care provider has to do is insert the sample and then the rest is taken care of by the disc, which is uh, not reused. So one of the uh, things that we hope to expand to in the future is uh, the use of whole blood instead of blood plasma. As of right now, we're all testing today on samples with blood plasma, but um, there's a required centrif uh, centrifuge step in between that to get the relevant part of the blood out. Um, because our device is already a centrifuge, we see no reason why we couldn't expand the functionality to already take care of that step and make it even easier for point of care applications. Um, we want to expand the blood panel to a full cardiac panel and basically make each of those channels a separate type of test so we could potentially uh, look for other biomarkers other than ProBNP. And that would allow us as well to um, have a flexible platform where a point of care provider can choose between running four of the same test or perhaps a completely even different test, um, which would potentially make our device applicable in other health cases as well um, and hopefully further reduce the effective cost of ownership on the part of the clinic. Our device uses um, only low-cost electronic components um, and commercial off-the-shelf off devices. Um, we estimate that our full device will be available for under $1,000 once it's fully completed. The only consumable is the test disc itself and the sample. Um, the sample is provided by the patient, obviously, but the test discs um, in quantity should be produced for a very small amount of money. Right now, we estimate somewhere in the uh, realm of $4 per test. And again, that could be four different tests on the same disc. Um, this also handles um, storage and analytics, both of the precursors and also of the data. Um, that's not something that the provider has to worry about, and uh, that will hopefully further the effectiveness of the device. And also, there's no major competitor in the USA right now for ProBNP testing specifically, so that is an area we hope to target more. So here's our team. Um, thank you very much for your time. Let me know if you have any questions. Do you have any questions? Sorry. Yes. Sorry, can you say that again? 
Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so absolutely. So one of the, uh, no, I heard it, I'm sorry. Um, oh, the question, yeah, the question was uh, what kind of information do we get from patients or care providers to sort of steer our development, right? Um, so we didn't interface with patients directly, but I can say, as was uh, mentioned in the last presentation, we are aiming for a very small sample size, and as a result, we don't want to cause discomfort to the patient, but something like a finger prick is something already done um, fairly easily in a standard outpatient um, context. Um, we definitely looked into the demographics of point of care applications in the United States uh, specifically, um, and that's how we were able to determine that by minimizing the cost of our device, that really is going to be the deciding factor in uh, adoption and thus ultimately the effectiveness of the device. If it's not easy to use, um, if, it's not, if it's something that requires uh, chemical precursors or anything that has to be stored specially or special trained operators to use, it's not going to be adopted. So by reducing the sort of barrier to entry in all of those areas, we hope that that um, does in fact serve the point of care provider's needs. So yeah, that was something we tried to factor in. Any other questions? Yes. Right, um, right. So how are you going to take care of making that robust and reliable and if you've got some kind of stuff gets in like blood and things like that? Yeah, definitely. So um, the question was, uh, since our device involves moving parts, uh, sort of how do we justify that and how do we deal with the challenges that that presents? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, we specifically elected to use a device that has a centrifuge in it um, because we believe that a traditional lateral flow assay has some downsides that we can sort of eliminate with this method. Um, the reason we're doing that is because we're able to do more effective mass ex exclusion and also decrease the amount of time it takes to actually run the entire sample. Um, in order to deal with that, we have actually had to take um, some specific design considerations into mind. Uh, one of the things that our original enclosure was using was a bulkhead to separate the transport area from the other electronic components in the, uh, within the device itself. Um, and trying to reduce the amount of contaminatable um, surfaces inside of the device. That is something we're still looking into and certainly in our, are going to improve upon. Um, but at the end of the day, the motor itself is only the kind that you find in a DC fan or actually within a uh, hard disk reader. Um, as a result, it's something that's manufactured on a very large scale already, and so we know that it has a good history of reliability. It's something for which control electronics have already been developed and we've reused in some cases. Um, but it's, in reality, it's almost as simple as the thing that spins the, um, the component in your microwave oven that rotates the food. I mean, it's not a particularly complex device as far as the mechanism goes. Um, but there are concerns, yeah, and we have, uh, we're continually seeking to fix those issues. So. Good question, though. Any others? Cool. All right, thank you very much.